Hello. This week I'm joined by Jeff Talbot. Jeff's one of our local preachers, as many of you know, and he was actually originally due to be leading worship at Kempston East on Palm Sunday. Obviously that's not going to happen, but he's kindly recorded a message to be part of this video this week. Hello. Today is Palm Sunday, when we remember the triumphant arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem. And it's a day when many of us would have been given palm crosses in our churches if they'd still be meeting. Maybe some of you still have a palm cross left over from last year or the year before. But first let's hear the story as written in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21 and the first 11 verses. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There, Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him, the master needs them and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make come true what the prophet had said. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He's humble and he rides on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and they did what Jesus told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, they threw their cloaks over them and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Hosanna to David's son! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise be to God! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? the people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the crowds answered. So it was Passover, and Jerusalem was full of people. Just, just think of the London Embankment on New Year's Eve, or the Bedford Embankment during the River Festival. And into this mass of people, Jesus came riding on a donkey. Today we, we often think and find that image is everything. The way you look, the way you dress, the way you speak and the things you say, the way you behave are all part of the image that you want to project. And this is particularly the case with the people who wield some kind of power. Just think of the presidents and prime ministers, politicians, leaders of big businesses and so on. The people in Jerusalem were expecting Jesus to ride into town as a king. They would have been surprised to see him coming into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. I mean, surely a big white charger would have been much more appropriate. But that wasn't the kind of king that Jesus was. In those days, a king could ride a big horse or he could ride a small donkey. And his choice depended on the message he was trying to give or the image he was trying to portray. A big horse implied that he was riding into battle, whereas a donkey meant that he was coming in peace, unarmed. To show that he was a king, Jesus needed something to ride on, but choosing a donkey as his steed showed that he was coming in peace. And the crowds were there, they were shouting Hosanna as Jesus entered the city. Now, we quite happily sing Hosanna in many hymns and songs, particularly on Palm Sunday. But do you know what it means? Do you know what it is that you're actually saying and singing? I'm guessing that many people think it's an expression of praise and thanksgiving. And indeed, that's what it's largely become. However, its original meaning was save us. Hosanna to David's son. Save us, son of David. 
Save us from what? On that first Palm Sunday, the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah, for someone, a new king who would save them from their enemies. The fact that they were calling Jesus the son of David shows that they thought he was indeed the Messiah. Over the centuries, the Jewish people had had many enemies. The Old Testament is littered with them. But the enemy on this occasion were the Romans who occupied their land. Jesus the King, though, didn't come to kick out the Romans. As the King of Peace, he had a completely different agenda. As Graham Kendrick wrote, This is our God, the Servant King, a King who came not to be served, but to serve. Palm Sunday is the start of Holy Week, a week in which so many things happened. In one of those events, Jesus shows his servant nature by washing his disciples' feet. And I find it's been humbling over the past week or so to see that this desire of people to serve others still kicks in, particularly at times of crisis and great need as over three quarters of a million people in this country sign up as volunteers to help the NHS, the elderly and the vulnerable. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Later in the week, Jesus met with his disciples to share the Passover meal, the meal we know as the Last Supper. During the meal, Jesus announced that one of those 12 disciples would betray him. And although he didn't name Judas, Judas knew who he was referring to. Then Jesus blessed the bread. He broke it and he shared it out with the words, This is my body. He then passed the wine around saying, This is my blood poured out for you as a new promise between God and his people. And after supper, he went out with his disciples to the gardens where he asked them to stay awake while he prayed for his heavenly father. But they fell asleep, all except Judas, who alerted the soldiers and betrayed Christ. And as Jesus was being arrested, the rest of his followers fled. Now it was the custom at Passover to allow a prisoner to go free. And the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, offered the people a choice. A choice between Jesus and a murderer called Barabbas. They chose Barabbas. And in doing so, the people's chance for Jesus changed from Hosanna on Palm Sunday to shouts of crucify a few days later. And so on the Friday, after intense humiliation and torture, Jesus was crucified and died on the cross. None of this was to come as a surprise to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, just before the passage we've just heard about Palm Sunday, Jesus tells his disciples that they must be the slave of the others, like the Son of Man, who did not come to be served but to serve, and to give his life to redeem many people. Through his death and resurrection, which we shall hear about next week on Easter Sunday, Jesus conquered sin once and for all. He set us free to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. Where though on this Palm Sunday does this leave us? What would your shout be? Would you be one of those who shouted Hosanna and then changed their tune to crucify? Would you shout Hosanna as a shout of praise and thanksgiving for Jesus? Or would you shout Hosanna in its original meaning of savers. Well, I hope none of you would 
change your mind from and move from shouting Hosanna to shouting crucify. But shouting for Hosanna in praise and thanksgiving is fine. But, you know, I have a feeling that in the situation that we all currently find ourselves in, we more and more would use Hosanna with its original meaning of save us. And in doing so, we will be asking Jesus to save us as a world, as a nation, a people, as families and as individuals from the COVID-19 coronavirus. We will be asking him to save us from infection, both globally and personally, from the effects that isolation and social distancing are having on our communities and on individuals, from the effects that it's having on national and international economies. And we will be asking Jesus to, in saving us all from this, to bring us back to normality. But what would that normality be? Would we want to return to exactly how things were on, say, January 1st this year? We look around and the Earth's atmosphere is healthier now than it was at the start of the year, with less pollution. People are showing their concern and compassion for their fellow human beings more than they were at the start of the year. Many of us are doing things to help others that we weren't doing a couple of months ago. Wouldn't it be nice if when things get back to normal, much of that could continue? And then our shouts of Hosanna, save us, Jesus, would really be able to change to Hosanna, praise the Lord, and thank him for all his mercies and all the good things he has done. Amen. And be blessed this Palm Sunday. Thanks very much, Jeff. We're going to come to some prayers now, some prayers thinking about Palm Sunday and thinking also about the days ahead, Thursday, Friday, the days that are so important to think about in this Holy Week. A few years ago on Palm Sunday, we happened to be in the city of Aksum in northern Ethiopia when it was Palm Sunday. And I'm going to use a few pictures from that visit just to be useful illustrations for our prayers today. I hope it will give you some idea of the excitement and the enthusiasm of all the pilgrims in Axum on that very special day. Imagine yourself for a moment as one of the crowds as Jesus came into Jerusalem. Noisy, excitement, wondering exactly what was going on and what was going to happen next. Lord, help us to understand what it was like, not only for you, but your friends and all the other people in the crowd as you came into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. People were excited and happy and praising with shouts and branches. But some realised that this was just the beginning, the beginning of a really difficult week. Many people longed for a good outcome. 
but some were fearful that that would not be the case. Help us, Lord, this week to be conscious of being on a journey with you, on a difficult journey into uncertainty. We can't help but think of people who are affected and infected around the world with the COVID pandemic. We pray, Lord, for those who are seriously ill, for those who are dying, for the families of those who have died. As we look to the week ahead, on Thursday we remember you, Lord, meeting somewhat secretly with your close circle of friends, taking bread and wine after you'd shared supper together, and promising that for them this was part of the future, part of the future of being your people. Help us, Lord, to remember always that we are your people and that we are united in you. And of course, we have to look ahead to Friday, thinking of that lonely journey that you, Lord, made to the cross, wondering what on earth was going on and what was going to happen. Crucify him were the shouts of the people who had been shouting, Hosanna! As we go through the week, Lord, with you, help us to keep in touch with what happened to you. Help us to keep in touch with what is happening in your world today. In all the difficulties and trials that people face. And help us, Lord, to look forward to the reality of what is coming next week. God bless you.